Welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner. This is another Photoshop Elements video tutorial. Thanks to everybody that's been subscribing to the show. Subscriptions are up and uh, that's a fantastic thing on YouTube. Also, thanks to those of you uh, once again who've picked up a copy of the DVD. If you'd like to get your hands on a copy of the DVD to learn a, a lot of great Photoshop techniques, uh, I priced it very low. It's only $15 there is actually 46 uh, videos on that DVD in the past I said 45 and I sat back and started counting I was like no the wait there's 46 so anyway there's 46 they're high resolution WMV files so they play right on your computer you can pause them and stop them as much as you want and best of all you don't have to be connected to the internet to see these things you know YouTube kinda takes the videos and uh, takes a lot of the resolution away so sometimes it's hard to see detail but these videos have a uh, great detail on them and they're well worth the uh, the fifteen dollars so stop over to jackstechcorner.com and just click on the little buy it now button and pick up a copy with that said uh, if you go to jackstechcorner.com if you've been there in the past um, there was a, a different website up I started reconstructing my website actually uh, yesterday and uh, getting it back in order some for some reason the wiki uh, website I was using actually everything shifted to the right so it kind of uh, lost its formatting somehow so I changed it over now and I'm actually going to uh, work at creating the website by hand so uh, looks pretty neat and uh, there's a start anyway if you have any suggestions or ideas email them over to me my email here is jackstechcorner at gmail.com or post a comment on these videos the last thing is uh, please please check out our sponsor greenscreenwizard.com uh, his name is Ken, the gentleman that produced Green Screen Wizard, and I know you've watched a few of my videos I've done on green screening. Um, so check out his site, and by all means, pick up a copy of the Green Screen Wizard, um, or you know, pick up the, either the Pro version, or I would said I would really suggest a plugin since we're doing Photoshop Elements. The plugin works in Elements, works in CS3 uh, as well as CS4 Photoshop. So there's that. Today we want to talk about uh, some framing techniques. I was playing around this morning and trying to come up with a, a new idea for a tutorial. And a lot of you have been emailing me. A lot of you have been on the web forums. Uh, if you go to jackstechcorner.com and click on the uh, our forums, sign up for those. I see a lot of you are going over and signing up. And signing up is great, but start uh, commenting, posting stuff in there. Uh, let's talk back and forth through that. It's a great way to uh, stay in touch with each other. You know, a whole group of people using... Uh, these tutorials and it's nice that we can work with each other on these uh, different Photoshop uh, problems but today um, we're going to go ahead and look at some framing techniques this is an interesting framing technique I came up with this morning and I thought you might be interested in it so I figured I'd go ahead and show it to you the first thing we're going to do is talk about downloading a texture um, to make this work properly we're going to have to get some texture somewhere and I did a search basically for uh, free uh, Photoshop textures and I came up with this website uh, the grunge.com it's just a uh, well, it's right up here G R U N G E T E X or textures so grunge textures dot com and what I'll do is I'll put this in the notes if you're watching this video look to the right on uh, the little write up it'll it'll be a link in there so you just click on it and just go over to the site <coughs> excuse me and uh, download the uh, uh, some textures so let's go ahead. This morning I used concrete and it worked out really well, but we're going to look at some metal and uh, see what those look like. And these are different metals. These are really nice high resolution um, textures, so it works really, really well. Let's go ahead and pick out one of these diamond type textures here. If you click on that, it comes up such as this. And right down here, uh, the gentleman that wrote this actually put the download, so you can download the original texture. Click on download we're going to save that file now what I did under pictures I got my pictures I created a folder called textures that way you can just download them there and they're ready to bring in right into your Photoshop organizer your uh, elements organizer so let's go ahead and just save it we can leave it that name or you can change it just click your mouse twice there and we can delete the numbers off the front we'll just call it metal texture save that out 
Now with that saved, we're going to go ahead and open our organizer so we can put it into an album so we can find it easily. Here's our organizer. It says new files of new files have been found. It probably just found that texture. Let's click OK or yes, and there it is. There's our texture. Click OK. We're going to import that texture. And if you notice, only that texture is being shown. Then what I did, I went to my albums, and on the album that we called Backgrounds, I just right clicked on here and I created a new album. And the new album I created is called Textures. So just click on Textures and you can drag that over and just add that to our Textures album. Now when I click on Textures, you'll see it's in here. There's some other different textures I've been finding. I've just been searching the internet for textures and just downloading those. And it's a texture because it has a little bit of depth to it. That's what makes it a texture, not just a normal background. So let's go ahead and get started with this uh, tutorial. First thing we're going to do is we're going to go back into our organizer and we're going to pick out a picture that we want to use. Let's see here. We'll get some kind of picture out of here that we can use. Let's use this one here. Let's use a picture of my sister and uh, my, uh, I guess it would be a, a great niece or a second niece. Anyway, it's my nephew's baby. So let's do a control O. That's the number O. That will make uh, the picture larger and fit it to the screen. Now let's go ahead and do a control J because we want to duplicate this because we never destroy this background image. So anything we do here, if we mess up, we just delete this. And also remember that the pixels are actually in this one, the pixels are set so we can actually work with them. And here the pixels are locked so we can't do anything. So make sure you're on layer one. And what we want to start out by doing is simply taking this and we're going to use the cookie cutter tool right here, so here it says cookie cutter tool and we're going to pick a shape now with these shapes you can see here there's some basic shapes you're like wow there's nothing nothing for me in there if you click this little button here to the right this gives you a bunch of different shapes you can have tiles uh, animals so you get the idea they have a bunch of different stuff in here that you can play with what we're going to do today is go with crop shapes. Now, once you have your crop shape selected, all we're going to do is pick one of these that we want to use. Um, and it doesn't really matter which one, whatever you want to pick out. I kind of like this one with the jagged edges. It makes a nice framed effect. So just double click it. Now it's ready to go. So now we can just pull our framed effect over pull it around our image and you can adjust this. Now when you adjust this make sure you're watching these little uh, cuts here on your edges. Maybe you want to get it above their hair. You can, you, can, you can frame this however you want to. This frame doesn't have to be perfectly square. I'll show you what I mean. We'll pull it in a little bit. Once you get it framed how you want just simply click the little checkbox. Now what's going to happen is it's going to take that outside edge and it's going to make it transparent. If we shut off the background image you can see now that that is transparent. Alright, once we have that I want you to click here and now I want you to duplicate that background once again. Control J. Okay, now that we have that turned on let's just turn this one off. We're going to work with this one and this one, just these two. Now what we want to do now is anything behind this that's coming up on this transparency, this will sit on top of it because this is transparent so the background will show through whatever we put on here and this will show on top. So let's leave this turned on because we're going to work on this layer and we're going to put our texture on top of this layer. See, this is why it's important to know where you put your textures in your albums. Let's get back up here. Click on our textures. Let's grab that metal one. Right click on it. 
go to full edit and there's our texture now to get this texture on top of this picture you can see down here it's different it's actually working different layers because it's different pictures so this layer is not involved in this picture yet let's go ahead and select all click on the move tool and we're going to just drag it over and drop it on here then what you're going to do is grab these little bars and expand it out grab the bar on top expand it up and grab the bar on the bottom expand it down until you get it to the point where all the edges are covered alright click your checkbox now at that point as you can see being that this out here, here let's see this here being that this <clears throat> is actually a transparency around here when we turn the background on the picture is not transparent so it's laying on top of the background it's a visual effect now you can blend these in a lot of different ways in other words lighten this up or lighten this up or darken this or darken this whichever you want the way we do that is make sure your layer is selected that you want to work with click the adjustment layer pull down menu and let's go to you can either do levels or brightness and contrast once it comes up click OK now I'll do a control G to group it with the layer right below it now that's grouping it now if we double click on this we can adjust the brightness of just the actual uh, background here the texture let's go ahead and do that you can see how we can make it brighter but our picture in the center is not changing whatsoever we can darken it down a little bit if you want to give it a different look change your contrast just so that way what happens here is if that was left real bright uh, like this when the eye looks at it the eye is going to get pulled to the outside of the picture for some reason uh, I guess it's just the way we look at visuals so if we drop this down and make it a little darker what's going to happen is your eyes can get pulled to the center that's what we want when we frame right we don't want to pull to the frame we want pulled to the center now we can also click on this layer that's our picture we can do another adjustment layer let's do levels this time click OK do a control G now we're going to group that level to the picture let's go ahead we can adjust our picture in the middle now you see it's getting brighter but the outside is not we can adjust it turn it down we can adjust the background lighting a little bit we can make it even a little brighter if we want you just got to watch with these so you don't end up creating an overexposed picture just like that once you're all done with the picture all you have to do to save it is go to file save as now it's going to come up as a TIFF image because I'm on that layer and that layer just happened to be a TIFF but we just want to change the whole picture to a JPEG let's just take this just call it the frame one you can call it whatever really you want to call it and click save now the quality remember I always like to do high quality because then I can print this at whatever size I want to print it at and yeah I know a lot of you have written in subject sometimes that's a big file that's 5.9 megabytes that is a large file but you know the more information we have or the more pixels we have to work with and the better resolution the better we can print this at whatever size and it's going to look really really good click OK here's another little trick that I'd like to show you because a lot of you have been writing in saying Jack when I go to print the picture out a lot of it's cropped off it doesn't look right there's an easy way to test that check this out if I hit file and I go down to print it's going to come out with this and you're looking at it right now and you look the sides are cropped off well we can't print it in a portrait orientation we have to change it to landscape orientation and then we see that the sides are still cut off because that's the actual size 
we look at it by an 8 by 10 you see you have more on there more of the picture so what you can do there is actually just resize the picture a little bit and actually pull those sides in a little bit let's go 5 by 7 see what it's going to look like now in the 5 by 7 you see it's going to print nice it's printing all of our detail it's printing our framing we're good to go there so if you have to resize your images all you would do is just go to image resize image size you can actually change the size of it right here you can see now where it says width is 12 that's why it's cutting it off and it's an 8 by 10 so let's just try to change it to 10 and if this constraint um, proportions is checked it's going to keep the height and width set no, so when you change this number this number will automatically change if you hit OK on that one and see what we get now we can see what we get when we print now you see 8 by 10 is still just a little bit cut on the edges but if we get rid of that crop to fit, we don't crop anything, you'll see now that we get the whole picture in an 8x10. 5x7, still works pretty well. 4x6, which is your normal print, it still looks good there. And just hit cancel. Okay, folks, I just wanted to show you some framing techniques. That's how you save the picture. And now you also picked up how to actually check your print to make sure it's going to print the size you want it. I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial. And I hope to see you back here next time uh, with, an, with my other video tutorials. Please keep those comments rolling in, folks. That uh, keeps me uh, bringing up new ideas for you. Uh, some things I don't even think of that you folks want that um, I can definitely find the answer and tell you how to fix it up. So until next time, keep those shutters clicking. Keep the editors editing. And I'll see you back here very soon. Bye for now.